Hi muckers and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all having the best day ever. Thank you so much for clicking on my channel today and clicking on this video and choosing to spend even a little portion of your day with me. I really appreciate it. And if you're ready to talk with me, please, this is the video for you. I have wanted to film this for quite some time. I, I've kind of dabbled in it here and there, but I, I really just have, ooh, could make a fun beat out of that. I just really, it's like a Charlie XCX song. Right? A little silly. I love Charlie XCX. Um, actually met her a couple weeks ago, or like one week ago actually. Um, so sweet. But, speaking of meeting, I've also met Emma Chamberlain, who I'm going to be talking about today. So, some parts of this video may sound like bitchy, but just know that it's coming from a place of like, I am a true Emma Chamberlain fan. I am a Emma Chamberlain I ride or die. I, I love that girl so much. She is my favorite YouTuber. I don't even know if, if we can call her that anymore because she's not a YouTuber, but I just have so many opinions on the rebrand and basically what happened to Emma Chamberlain, which is probably what I'm going to end up titling this video. So if you're not aware, Emma Chamberlain is one of the, the most subscribed YouTube channels and she was kind of like the teen icon and she still is, which is shocking considering she has completely left YouTube. And, and one thing I do want to say is not only has Emma Chamberlain left YouTube, Emma Chamberlain, again, anything I'm saying in this video is coming from a fan, like, point of view, so I've given you the warning. If you take it too intensely or whatever, that's on you. I really don't give a shit. Like, I'm telling you, I'm a fan, and I love her. It seems that Emma Chamberlain nowadays not only doesn't post on YouTube, but doesn't post on social media if it doesn't come with monetary gain for her. And my original opinion whenever she left YouTube was, this is going to be great for her. You know, she talked about the reasoning being burnout and just needing like space to, you know, kind of collect herself from burnout and do other things that she's passionate about and try other things and try other hobbies and live her life. And I thought that that sounded really, really, really great. And I still think it does. However, it comes across so disingenuous to me personally that not only has she completely left YouTube now, but any posts that she does will be on Instagram. And she used to post on Instagram even when she wasn't uploading on YouTube, you know, especially she went to Paris and she was posting, you know, daily pictures of her trip in Paris. And she had gone to New York and she was posting daily pictures in New York. And nowadays, she doesn't even do that unless it's hashtag ad or unless it's paid promotion, or even as far as her Instagram stories these days are literally paid promotions. And it's just really annoying as a fan whenever your favorite creator not only has left YouTube, so you don't even get any new videos anymore, but you know that the reasoning for that is overall better for her, so that's great. You don't even get posts from her anymore unless she's trying to sell you something. And one thing I do want to say as well, she is the brand ambassador of so many different companies and so many different brands and she is killing it. But it just seems that she's now making up for the fact that she's no longer posting on YouTube and she's collaborating with every brand possible because she is collaborating with multiple different skincare brands. She collaborated with one last year, one the year before that, and then one this year. And she's the brand ambassador of one of them too. So to promote conflicting skincare routines is, is not a problem because we know you're getting paid. However, at each time she says that she's so excited to show the fans that, you know, this is her new skincare routine and she's been trying this out for years or she's been trying this out for months. And that logistically is impossible whenever she is promoting so many different skincare brands and she's saying that this one specifically works, but then she's also promoting this one in six months time. But she's been using this specific one in her entire routine and it literally is just like, paid promotion after paid promotion. And one of the big controversies around Emma leaving was the build up to it was people were saying that they didn't feel like she was being authentic in her content anymore. And I made an entire video on this defending her. The criticism was that she isn't being truthful about the life she lives. She films a vlog, so she's a vlogger, right? And she's been doing it since like 2017 or something like that. Um, and she really skyrocketed to fame. Um, through doing that, through being the relatable girl, and obviously as she grew in fame, her relatability to me and you was lessened and lessened because we're not being invited to, you know, Louis Vuitton shows and we're not going to, you know, 
all these different like fun things, right? So she was then getting called out for not showing that side of her life. Like her vlogs maintained her just going for coffee and you know, doing boring stuff like reading a book or staying in bed all day and cooking. So people really, like a small group of people, which then turned to a big group of people, and it was never her fans, started getting really angry that they felt that they were being lied to because in her videos she would say that she didn't have any friends, she had no social life, she never went to parties, she was this boring person, and then people would be like, but people are posting pictures of you on Instagram with Kendall Jenner at dinners, or you're being seen at Vogue parties, or you're going to the Met Gala. And there were moments that she has shown, and she really did water it down. And my opinion on that was, I never saw anything wrong with it. I think to keep a level of relatability is great with your audience, because it's something that we can watch and we can relate to. Would I also love to watch her doing the extravagant things? Yeah, because I can't relate to that and it's exciting to watch. The same way it was exciting to watch Jeffrey and Shane live a m magnificent life, even though we don't like them at all, a magnificent life that w we'll not really live. It's exciting to see something that we're not used to, right? So I see both sides of it, but one of the things was I said in my original video that Emma Chamberlain is getting criticism for not showing her authentic life and living a boring life. And I said that not only does she probably live a boring life most days of the week and then do exciting things, if she was to show the over-the-top parties and meeting all these celebrities and going to all these dinners and all these big money expensive trips and all like that, she would be said that she is not relatable anymore. However, now that she's showing a more boring life, people are saying that she's trying to be too relatable, so it is a lose-lose situation for her, which is why I believe that it ended up her leaving the platform, because she couldn't win either way. She was getting criticism for showing too little, and then whenever she wouldn't show anything, she was getting criticism for not showing that. It was just a complete mess, and my opinion on it was that I just felt bad for her, and it obviously built up so much that she couldn't take it anymore, and that with burnout, she left. But what I do need to say is, it is always the fans that give you those opportunities. The fact she was able to basically retire at 20 years old is insane. And she got there because of her fans. So to completely stop posting on every single social media unless you're being paid to do so is very disingenuous to your fans. And she still has her podcast, which is a great podcast. It's called Anything Goes. And I would really recommend if you like Emma Chamberlain content or even just podcasts to try it out. It's, it's really entertaining. People have been calling that out as well because of how ad like heavy it has gotten ever since she's left YouTube because obviously she's making up for lost income. Um, so one thing I do need to say is I'm holding on faith because she still has the podcast and it's nice to have that. It's, you know, sad to not have videos from her and it's sad to not get Instagram posts whenever she's not trying to shove a, a product down my throat or, you know, try to sell me something. And again, as harsh as all of that sounds, it's coming from a place of, I just miss her. And so, whenever you go on, there's this page, for example, it's called Emma Chamberlain Updates and they're actually like a really great page. Um, they, they post all these things about where she's seen and stuff and it's like, you know, she's seen by fans going to all these events, you know, fans will take pictures with her and she still takes pictures of them. She was really nice to me both times. And people are like, wow, she's going and doing the most exciting stuff and she's not even posting any of it on social media. And that is literally her job. That is her job. But the issue is she is posting things on social media, but it's a very orchestrated, brand friendly, trying to sell you things. And it reminds me of whenever beauty gurus were first exposed for only doing things for money. You know, the, the hashtag ad phenomenon where I think it was here for the tea had exposed, was it Jaclyn Hill? Yeah, for, you know, just doing things for money. And I'm gonna be honest, that's what seems like Emma Chamberlain's doing, obviously because she wants to take all this time off YouTube and she basically left YouTube. She now has to make her money somewhere. But things like this, she's always seen at parties with Kendall Jenner, um, she's always seen with like, these are really big celebrities, right? So she's seen with Kate Hudson and Kelly Sawyer. And if you scroll down here, even the, the updates from the update accounts are mostly sponsored posts. So the only videos she's recently posted has been one with her mother. Here we have it. And she's talking about Mother's Day and even this, which is the, the first bit of crumbs that Emma has given, oh my god, look, you can see it's starting to get bright out because it's 5 a.m. The first bit of crumbs that Emma gives us of content in quite some time that's actually video, again, is paid. It's Macy's. It's, sorry, 
so disingenuous whenever your only form of content with your viewers and I, except for your podcast, is just making money. There's no other creator, I think, that would really get away with this. And I think the reason is that Emma has such a big, like, parasocial relationship with her fans that, you know, they really do think that they're a best friend. I can speak for myself. Um, but just to, you know, just turn your entire style into paid post after paid post, and I'm not going to post anything even just for fun anymore. It's really sad to see that it turned out that way. So anyway, um, there was also a lot of uh, Coachella posts that she did, and a lot of her Coachella posts, um, believe it or not, were uh, paid ones because they were with um, certain designers. Um, and actually, I did see a lot of people DM me that they didn't explicitly say hashtag ad on them, but they were paid. Um, someone had like DMs or something or emails about that she was like paid for some sort of post. I'm just gonna say allegedly with that. But even at that, like Coachella posts as well being like paid for, it's. This was once a YouTuber who, even if they didn't do a video on it, would at least do a tweet every once in a while, like, updating the fans on how they're doing with the opportunities that the fans have given them. Or, or maybe an Instagram story, just a quick picture to update the fans instead of, you know, another one updating them, but it's hashtag ad, selling you a product, paid promotion. It just kind of seems like the content creator doesn't care anymore. So literally just scrolling through this, it is just uh, brand deal after brand deal after brand deal. And I really don't think that there is another creator who is using their platform for as much paid promotion as what Emma is doing right now. And even if they are, they're putting other content in with it. And it just seems like Emma is so over it. And also one thing to note, Emma is really, really great at being able to cross platform. My camera's about to die. I'm waiting for it to die. All right, camera successfully died. Now, what I was saying is Emma is really great and I think she is so exactly what a brand wants. She's relatable, she's pretty, and there, there's just something about her that is a great quality. And so she works well with, you know, now this, she's going into modeling and, you know, she started off on YouTube showing her journey as going to the first ever Louis Vuitton fashion show, being invited, and now she's one of their main brand ambassadors. And I can tell you for certain, I went to the Louis Vuitton fashion show in Paris a month ago or something like that. Like I went to a recent one, right? And I went because I wanted to see Emma Chamberlain. And whenever we were outside, we were watching the celebrities go in and line up. And I can tell you that there were celebrities there. And none of them got a louder crowd screaming, oh my god, so excited, Emma, Emma, Emma. No other celebrity got it as loud as uh, Emma Chamberlain. The closest would have been Joe Jonas. And even his one was not as loud as Emma Chamberlain. Screaming, 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 Emma, Emma, Emma. And one thing I do need to say, I tweeted this in the moment. This is, you know, in the wake of Emma not being, you know, for the fans anymore, in my opinion. She was the only celebrity there who ignored the screaming crowd. And... The screaming crowd were mostly there for her. It was all people my age. There were um, a lot of really sweet girls there. And we were screaming so, so, so loud. And here's the thing. You don't have to acknowledge the crowd or whatever. But all the other celebrities were coming over, posing for the paparazzi, posing for the fans and the big crowd, and then going in. Or even posing for paparazzi, waving and going in. Emma was the only one who uh, walked past the paparazzi, walked past the fans, and just ignored all, filmed a video uh, for Louis Vuitton in like a corner where we could all see her, everyone was screaming. Um, she didn't wave or anything, she didn't look at us, and she just walked straight in. And I remember that there were so many angry fans there that day, so many pissed off Emma fans. I ended up leaving early, and it was super interesting because a lot of the girls there were like, oh my god, ever since she's left YouTube, like she just doesn't care about her fans anymore. And I remember sticking up for her in that moment, and I was like, if this was my first ever experience seeing Emma Chamberlain where she ignored the fans screaming, and I mean they were so loud. In, in Louis Vuitton's video, in the background, you can even hear it, no other person got it as loud as her, and she completely just blanked it, even though she was like so in front of us, or just a little bit in front of us. I remember saying to the girls, I was like, if that was my only experience seeing Emma, I would think that she was so fake, so rude. But I had met her in Paris a year before, or a couple months before, and then also met her in LA. 
whenever I met her in Paris, it was at a Louis Vuitton event. So she was kind of working whenever she met me. So she had a, a nice attitude with it. And I really appreciate that. And she was so sweet and literally one of the best moments of my entire life. Like my favorite YouTuber this is. And then in LA, I met her at her boyfriend's concert. I was waiting for um, Spell Sash and Kat. They were late. And I had to wait outside like 40 minutes after the show started. And then they finally were getting there in two minutes. So I was about to go in. And Emma Chamberlain was in front of me going in late. And I knew that she didn't want to be seen by anyone because there's a lot of fans who go to the shows and just take pictures with her or try to get pictures of her. And even during the intervals of, of role model Tucker's songs, they were like, we want Emma. And it was just so inappropriate. Um, I was like, hi, Emma. Like, I, I saw you in Paris. Like, it's so good to see you. You look beautiful. And she was like, oh, thank you. And she turned away again. And I went, I went, sorry to be annoying, but am I able to get a picture? I knew she didn't want to get one. She had not been spotted by any other fans. That's why she went in late. Fair fox to her. She still went, yeah, that's no problem. She came over, gave me a hug, took the picture, and went in. So I've met her in a, in a formal setting and a very informal one. And she has been nothing but polite and sweet to me. And she was not on YouTube during the, the second meeting, the LA one. So if that was the only experience of her at the Louis Vuitton show where she completely blanked everyone, I would have thought she was rude, but I genuinely think that she's a very nice, sweet girl because there's so many pictures with fans here. I just do think that it's been very weird that anytime she now goes to professional events, she really does kind of blank the fans. Um, but her transcending into this world of media now where she's friends with Kendall Jenner, she's going to all these big celebrity events and stuff. She is that perfect person for it. They tried to do it with James Charles, but he had too many scandals. She is like perfect cookie cutter, great for it. Now another thing, to be said, she has um, her coffee company as well as um, being like a brand ambassador for like a hundred different fucking companies at this stage. Um, so she has good streams of income. So that's another kind of annoying factor when the only thing she'll post really is, you know, to be paid. Um, now also another thing is her boyfriend, role model. For the entire duration of her YouTube channel, she um, didn't address the fact that they were dating which I fully supported. I know there were a lot of people having problems with that. I thought it was actually great. I mean, I don't want to know about your relationship. I just think it's sweet and cute. Um, whenever she did leave YouTube, however, that's whenever they started to make their relationship a bit more known to everyone. So he has a music video for a great song and the entire video, albeit very cringy, um, is, and I'm actually going to see him in London, but this is just like a bit cringe, um, is Emma walking the streets and he's in front dancing to her, so obviously they made the relationship known then, and also she went on the Call Her Daddy podcast and, uh, was talking about sex, was talking briefly about her boyfriend and, a drama and stuff like that and it, it it was a completely different side of her than anyone ever saw on her YouTube so a lot of people were like oh my god is anyone else shocked that you know there's this side of Emma and we never got to see it and there's just so many like different things about her ever since leaving YouTube and again I fully respect and love the decision I hope she's resting and healing and all like that from all the burnout um but I, I just wish that her approach with it on cross platforms would be a bit more like nice to the fans you know what I mean like an Instagram post whenever that's your job isn't hard to do at all literally at all especially when you're taking them anyway but you're like refusing to post them unless you're getting paid I don't know and I had po pulled up uh, her YouTube channel as well so she has 11.4 million subscribers uh, her last video now is nearly five months ago and it was um, a video of her just making soup um, it is as boring as it sounds and I do love her. It, it was very clear that she was reaching the end of wanting to make content here. Um, but you know, you can reach the end of wanting to make content and also know that you are being invited to events and stuff because of your fan base got you there. That's just my take on it. And I feel like if it was any other YouTuber, they would have got a lot called out by now. And I'm not trying to call her out. I'm just trying to have like a conversation about it because I'm such a big fan. And I hope that there's other people out there who have an opinion on it, who maybe are fans as well, or even not. I want to know your take on it. I don't know, that's, I just really want to know what you think about this. Again, I really do love Emma Chamberlain uh, so, so, so much. And again, to prove, because I know there's going to be so many people, and I, I hate that this is going to be the angle that people take with this video. I'm literally on my Instagram right now. To prove to you how much I am an Emma, right or die, I love her so fucking much. This video is literally coming from a place of just like, I miss her. Um, so literally, here we are in LA, so sweet. And then even sweeter to me was in Paris. 
I really love this girl and I just miss her and I know that people have been having this conversation online and I would love to know what yours is on it. I saw that Spell Sash had just posted a video, I mean, you have to watch it, but I, I can't wait to watch it. it it's like, um, what happened with the Dolan twins? And that made me think, and I was like, I would love to talk about what happened with Emma Chamberlain. Um, so anyway, I love you, I will see you in my next one, and let me know your opinion on this, and bye.